There are certain limitations to bow technology. Yes, so far we've been talking about bows that are drawn by hand. You put your hand on the string, you pull back, and there's only a certain amount of poundage a human arm and body can tolerate, no matter how much training you have or how young you were when you started practicing. But this doesn't mean that there's uh, necessarily a limit of poundage you can put on an arrow if you use machinery to do the pulling instead of your arm. Enter the gastrophites, um, gast gastrophites, sometimes you'll hear it called. This is the earliest form of what later becomes a crossbow. And it works not by pulling back with your arm or by using a crank or any mechanism like that. Rather, it's gravity loaded. So as the name suggests and the fellow in our illustration demonstrates, you pull back the string by pushing your body weight onto a slide. So this part of the gastrophides gives it its name. Gastra is, or gastra rather, is Greek for tummy, your stomach, your gut, and the gastrophides is the gut-loaded bow. And as advertised, this fellow's gut is sitting on top of the mechanism and he's leaning forward onto a wooden slide that's housed on the ground here. You can see this a little bit better on the replica from a museum over here on the side. So this is the mechanism that locks the string into place and it's mounted onto two ratcheting rails here so it can be pushed back but not forwards. And then here, there is an insert that slides in between the rails here and here with a groove down the center. That's what the bolt goes on. And when you let me clear this, come on, come on, erase, erase, damn you, erase. Oh, jeez. Okay. When you lean this way this part slides in this direction up onto the stock and then this mechanism locks as you put that pressure on to hold the string into place so once you've bent down all the way and you've pulled the string back as far as it's going to go as this fellow has this trigger mechanism holds the string as you bring it back up. So this is still handheld, yeah, and there's only so much weight you can hold in your hands. There's also going to be a huge amount of recoil. If something goes funky with the bolt, it's going to snap up and hit you in the face. So this is not safe. Don't do this at home. You're going to get hurt. You'll shoot your eye out, kids. Don't. Unless you have safety gear, in which case go for it. Okay. This is then aimed like you would a modern crossbow. And then this trigger mechanism here is thumbed back. This releases the pin that's holding the string into place. The string blah, is released. Hundreds of pounds are put behind a bolt and the bolt flies with penetrating force into the enemies. Now, this can help you fire through shields. It can get you through a linothorax. This just provides more sharp piercing force. It also works really well against cavalry and to Yeah, so cavalry draught animals like oxen pulling supply carts, you know, anything large-ish and far away that you want to shoot with force, it's great for that. But this is very difficult to aim. I mean, think for a minute about how you would go about aiming this. Even if you're sighting down the barrel, it's an awkward thing to hold, and you're putting your eyeball exactly where a stray bolt is going to flip back and hit you. So uh, not particularly safe. Also not particularly accurate. A bow is much more accurate. Your fingers are stabilizing, and it's not going to flip on you so much. About the worst thing that you have coming to you is string snap on your elbow. Or occasionally, if the bow stave breaks, it can kind of shatter in your face, but it's 
and not really as dangerous as this thingy is. But there's also a limit on how big this can get, how big the poundage is. Now it's the weight of a human body bearing down on it and the amount of stress that the bow stave can carry, but also how much weight the archer can lift with their bare hands. The next logical step would be to put this not on an archer's hands, but onto some kind of a firing stand. So let's see what that looks like. But 400 BCE, we're already off to a great start with the gastropodes, so piercing arrows, yay.